Hi, and welcome to Motivating and Recognizing Your Students with the Blackboard Achievements Tool. So welcome to everyone that we have currently with us and for those folks that are watching the archive later. My name is Tracy Miller, and I'm the online teaching coordinator with faculty in the Instructional Design Center, you think I'd know it by now, um, here at NIU. So today we're going to be talking about this achievements tool. And it's one of the new tools that just came out with the upgrade uh, that happened over Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we call it Service Pack 14. And it's, it's just been a tool that I've been really excited about um, for a while as we were testing it and, and using it in different environments. And I'm really glad you're here today because obviously it sounds like you have an interest too. And I hope we can share some information and show you how to use this this new tool, but it's also important to know why you would want to use this tool. Here's my information. Um, and then if you do want to know any more information about our upgrades and the new features, uh, just check out our Teaching with Blackboard site here and look at the different things that we posted about um, this upgrade and even some past upgrades. Um, a lot of new cool features that you might want to incorporate uh, into your courses um, this fall. Okay, to start with the what. What is an achievement and, you know, then why would you want to use it in your course? Well, you know, it sort of goes back to the old days of scouts where you would receive badges for skills that you've developed or accomplishments that you've done and you would be recognized for it because you would have uh, this different badge. So, you know, this is a very old scout uniform here, but I'm assuming that you're, you're having a camping badge or something here. This one over here looks like golf and all those badges were tied to very specific requirements that you had to complete in order to use the badge. And then, of course, you'd sew it on your sash or your, I have boys, so we had um, a red vest that we would sew um, patches and badges on. Uh, as far as professionally, I think over here um, we have some what I use, this is the corner of my office, and when I receive different certificates for professional development um, or, you know, attending different conferences, I kind of hang them all up here to, to show that this is something that I've done and I've learned and, you know, show it off with a little pride. Uh, the, the one at the top that's sort of hard to see there, that means that I've gone through all the training uh, to be able to do uh, research here at the university. And then in the very corner, there's a little certificate there. Uh, that's my ethics training because, you know, as a state employee, we're always proud when we pass those tests and say that we're ethical employees here in the state of Illinois. Okay, so the other thing that achievements is sort of based off of is this idea of gamification. And what that means is they've taken um, the, the game theory, the things that uh, really motivate students and adult, uh, all kinds of adults um, in video games and other kinds of games. And so taking that motivation to just reach that next level or to accomplish certain skills in order to, to move on and um, feel proud of yourself. They've taken these theories from games and they call it gamification. So you can see I have uh, have a picture of a simple game here. Um, many of you might have played these sort of things, but as you develop skills, you sort of um, add up points and then once you get enough points for a certain thing that you've done, um, you then can jump to the next level. And if you have played these things, you might also notice that in a lot of cases it'll say, you know, share this accomplishment out with your social networks. And so again, sort of taking these very old theories of um, scouts and earning badges, um, hanging things up on your refrigerator to recognize different things that you've done, and then using this gamification theory um, is all rolled up into this new achievement tool that's in Blackboard. 
And here's what it looks like. And this is actually a student view of what it looks like. So you can see that there's different badges that this student, Carl White, has earned. And um, the ones that are sort of brighter here, these means that this means that he's already earned these things. And then it's very clear of what he needed to do in order to earn these. So in this case, the animals of the ocean badge, um, he needed to know um, these different sets of criteria in order to earn that badge. The badges that are sort of um, faded out, these are ones that he still has not earned yet. And so um, it gives you that motivation. These are the things that I need to do in order to earn this badge. And then finally, this last one that I've just highlighted here, this is a certificate. So this would almost be um, a little bit higher level here where you've almost um, completed a course or completed um, something that's probably a little bit more rigorous than uh, just a badge. So kind of just different levels of achievement there. Um, I'm going to pause because I just went through a lot of information there to see if anyone has any questions. All right. Please and just uh, type in your questions or, or let me know, um, give me a thumbs up or something if you do have a question. And I'll be certainly happy to um, stop and answer them. So here's the Blackboard achievements. You will find them under Course Tools. It's the very first one since they're listed alphabetically and it's called Achievements. So that seems pretty simple. And they're used to recognize and reward students. And again, you can issue badges or certificates. And then I'm going to show you how you actually create one of these achievements. But in general, they are based on rules for meeting different requirements. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be um, setting up these rules and these requirements uh, so that the students can understand what they need to do to earn a badge. And they also. Um, it becomes a very automated process once you set up an achievement. Um, students can also send badges to the Mozilla Open Badges Backpack. Um, that I will kind of explain more at the end, so just kind of keep that in the back of your mind right now. But basically, these badges have been around. Uh, the Mozilla Open Backpack is, I believe, still in beta. And to be honest with you, Blackboard is still having a little bit of difficulty in um, integrating those in there. So we're going to just talk briefly about it towards the end um, and hope that um, it's a more seamless process with Blackboard soon. Currently, we have a bunch of our team actually at BB World, which is the big user conference for Blackboard. And so hopefully they're learning some even more cool things, uh, such as um, badges and achievements. And um, even we're, they're talking about incorporating some more dashboards so students can kind of get competitive with one of each other and, um, and try to go to higher levels of achievement using that gamification uh, theory I was talking about. So the first thing that you need to know about achievements is it's going to ask you if you want to um, issue a certificate, which is sort of that big end finish line kind of certificate, or whether you want to create a milestone. And I think a milestone is a really good way to start kind of describing how this works. So it's basically a level of achievement, and it's based on grade center columns. So all that criteria is already in your, your grade center as an assessment, um, something that you're going to grade. And so then we're going to talk about how you can set up this set of criteria, which they call triggers or rules. And the triggers or rules are basically what's going to trigger them to receive this milestone or this badge um, based off of what they're doing, how they're being graded in the grade center. And 
I think the best way is really going to be to walk you through these steps um, to kind of understand it. Um, the words alone don't really tell you the whole picture. So um, please jump in with questions, um, but I think things will become um, clearer in just a few minutes. And one of the things that's going to become clearer is when you set up an achievement, you need to think about are you going to send, set up something that's an and or an or rule? So down below here, I have an example. And I'm calling the milestone the great contributor achievement. And so students, in order to get this badge, will need to have 80 points or more on a blog assignment. So that means you've created a blog assignment. And um, you're going to grade it. And students that get 80 points or more are going to start to be able to learn this, the, earn this achievement. And what I mean by start is, if you're going to make the achievement an and achievement, then they're going to need to get 80 points or more on the blog assignment, and they're going to need to attempt something on the discussion board and they're going to need to get 80 points or more on a journal. So again, these are all based off of the Grade Center columns. So as you plug in these grades into the Grade Center, or if the students attempt um, something on the discussion board, it's automatically going to trigger uh, the students to, to reach these milestones and earn this badge. Now, the OR rule is where the students can do one of the three. So they can get 80 points or more on their blog assignment, or attempt something on a discussion board, or get 80 points more on their journal. And so they don't have to do all three. They just get to choose one. And so it's really up to you uh, which way you kind of want to structure this. But I'm going to kind of walk you through both. Um, so the AND rule, so that's where they have to do all three of the items. Um, once you establish an achievement, and remember we called it the great contributor, so that's the first thing you're going to do is name it. And then the second thing is you're going to um, select the type. And so there's that milestone. And there's a drop down menu right next to there, and that's where you're going to select a milestone, a certificate, or they have one that's just custom. But they're really based off of very similar things. So next, you're going to make it visible to the students when you're ready, of course. Uh, and then, of course, you're going to add a description. And so this is where you're going to tell the students exactly what they need to do in order to earn this milestone or this badge. And so here's where I have the example of I put that and statement in, just to be really super clear that they need to do all three of these things in order to earn that badge. After you've kind of put in that good description, you're going to click the Define Trigger button. And then we're going to set up those rules um, that are going to allow it to just once we get it all set up, it's going to be completely automated. And as students earn these milestones, they'll automatically uh, get these badges. So in order to create a rule, you start by um, naming the rule. And some of this is actually above the screenshot, but I just kind of wanted to focus in on this particular part that's grading a rule. But it's really simple. You name the rule. Um, and then there is an option to select a certain student uh, under their username. So why would you do that? If it was going to be something that maybe um, was unexpected, that all of a sudden you recognized that the student was the one that was always uh, posting the discussion boards, are really um, being interactive, um, and you just kind of wanted to recognize them for that, you can definitely um, give a student or, or some students some recognition sort of after the fact and use that. But what we're talking about here is much more, you know, just let's set up some automation and make things easy for ourselves. So we're down in the grade area. And that's what I mean by it's all set up um, 
based off of the grade center columns. So the first thing you do is select the grade center column that is going to um, create this rule or create this trigger. And there's a drop down menu over here on the side. And it's going to just basically list all of the grade center columns that you already have in there, including a total column. So if you're looking for um, an achievement that, you know, it's maybe the first 500 points that the students will earn or even a, a high percentage of the total grade, you know, you can set those up too. But in this instance, we're going to keep it simple. And basically, we're just interested in that blog because that was our first criteria. And then the next item we're going to use is over here where it says score. And so we have it set up where, in this example, where we're just using a 80 out of 100 kind of grading point scale. And we've selected greater than or equal to, and then 80 points. So it's just like we said in the description. If the students get 80 points or more on that assignment, then they're going to be able to um, start their journey on earning this milestone. And then you select Add Item. And the item, this is actually a screenshot, but the item will actually um, appear down below here. But this is an AND rule. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add another one. So you can see that that blog ended up down below here. We're going to start at the top again. And we're going to select a grade center column. And we're going to add the discussion forum. So that was the second criteria, that the student had to attempt um, something on the discussion forum. And you can, if you're grading your discussion forum, you can certainly add a grade to it. I'm just kind of giving you a different example here. Because you can see that the next select condition has the option that the user has at least one attempt for this item. And the reason I chose discussion forum for this is because sometimes that it is sort of an informal discussion. Um, so it's important that they attempt it, um, but maybe you're not grading it maybe as formally as some other things. And once you have it the way you like it, you can just select that add item again, and it'll appear right underneath the other one. And then, you know, just going on, you just keep doing that same activity. So the third criteria for this one was that um, to have an 80 points or more on the journal. And you would use the same process. But I do want to show you sort of the difference in um, creating an OR rule. So this is the one where you, the students don't actually have to do all three items in order to um, earn the milestone. And by the way, they may have to earn, they might have to do all three to get a good grade. But in this case, we're just saying you can do any of these three things to earn the milestone. So when you want to set up an OR rule, you're going to change that achievement so that right, so you're going right back to the beginning. You're creating a new achievement um, just for consistency. I still named it the great contributor. Um, same thing, you're going to identify the achievement type as a milestone, and you're going to make it visible to the students. The difference here is in the wording where I've added that or. So students can do the blog assignment, or the discussion forum, or the journal assignment to earn this milestone. And again, after you've sort of given a description, you're going to hit define triggers in order to um, set up those or rules. OK, so the beginning process would be the same as what we did for the AND rule, where we're simply going to select um, the criteria for 
a rule. In this case, you know, we used the grade and we used a greater than 80 points. Um, but what happens with the OR rule is after you set up the original rule, you're going to add another rule. So you can see it in the top. I'm trying to use my starburst to, to point things out. Um, you can see we already have one saved rule. And in this case, we're going to add another rule. And we're just going to click on that in order to um, create that other rule. And while I've got this screen open, this is above the area that I was sort of describing um, to you before. So you just need to give it a, a rule name. Um, the typical Blackboard having the time and date restrictions. Um, and then, again, as I suggested before, if there was specific users that, or even groups that you wanted to recognize for something, uh, you, you have that option, too. So can I go back and show you any of that? OK, and if we have time at the end, I will go to application chair and um, kind of show you it live also. Um, but I wanted to make sure that you kind of saw these, these screenshots and that we didn't run out of time. Um, one hour um, can go by very quickly sometimes. So the final step after you define those triggers or those rules is to select a um, the badge. What is the pretty little thing that it's going to look like? And so Blackboard has given some cute little options of selecting. And you can tell that um, they sort of have some meaning. The green one here, I think, uh, always makes me think of sort of the getting started award, you know, the go button, the green to kind of get folks motivated. And then, you know, the the flag here um, always looks like the finish line to me. So maybe that last push um, at the end of the semester to kind of just motivate the students to just cross that finish line strong. Um, and so you know, it, they make it really easy to kind of select these things um, very quickly. There's also this attach a file, in which case you can browse your computer up for a kind of a personalized badge that you've created. And so you know what I do? I either select um, a small icon or a small picture, or I create something maybe in a Word document or um, PowerPoint and just kind of personalize it, make it sort of cutesy. Um, Blackboard will let you know if you need to trim it down or anything. But I do think that um, giving it the personal touch, um, the students appreciate. I know I've used um, sort of an icon or a badge that represents um, what I'm trying to get across. So maybe if um, you know it's all about writing in your journal, then you know the the icon might look like an old-fashioned journal or notebook or diary or something like that, just to kind of show you. Um, you know what it's all about, and for the students to recognize quickly um, what you're trying to get at, kind of a, a visual representation. Now, down at the bottom here is um, this "Publish to Mozilla," and that's the backpack I was talking about. So you can see you can turn it on or off. Um, it, again, I I'm saying that we have not had complete success. Um, with using this, although I did create a course sites site uh, recently using this, and in course sites, which is actually sort of the free um, open version of Blackboard, um, I was able to export badges out to Mozilla. So I'm sure it's just a bug right now that we'll be resolving quickly. Um, so you might want to select that on initially. Um, because that will allow you to, to be able to do it, um, where if you select off, you, you kind of lose that option. So again, you just kind of select the badge that you want to use for this 
um, this particular achievement, and then you can save and exit, and you've created an achievement. So how's that going to look for the student? So in this case, we um, had the students um, look for it in the information area. And we usually recommend to faculty that the information is that kind of um, information that's always there, um, what textbook you're going to use, um, your syllabus. So it's something that students might be referring back to on a regular basis. And so um, you know, I would recommend that you put your achievements in that area too. And so this is what the students are going to see. They're going to see that they have this option of a, a great contributor badge. Um, and if you start using these a little more frequently, they would all be listed here. And exactly what they need to do to earn it. And so, you know, again, hopefully it's that motivation to be able to um, kind of tackle these assignments and um, that gamification where they just want to reach that next level. They want to be able to um, strive and, and, you know, maybe um, brag to their friends. I'm sure they're going to brag to their friends that they're a frequent blog contributor. <laughs> I don't know about that yet, but who knows? And then again, we're back to that original screen of what it would look like when the students click on their My Achievements. Um, again, think about that refrigerator where um, they're posting their accomplishments or their scouting sash where they're showing off um, the, the things that they've done and the badges that they've earned. Um, sort of for their own motivation. Um, at this point, this is something that they can see. Um, and you can see uh, what the students have earned. Um, but they're not necessarily publishing this out to the world, which is where the uh, Mozilla backpack comes into play. So I will talk a little bit about that in just a minute, but I want to pause again to see that, why don't you give me a check mark or a thumbs up, just to say I'm OK. Awesome, OK. Making sure everybody's still awake. So this is what my Mozilla backpack looks like. So this is outside of Blackboard right now. This is actually in the Mozilla backpack area for badges. and. What I've done is as I've learned earned different badges over the last couple of years, um, they appear in my backpack. And so the first one here is the one that I'm going to explain a little bit more. So this is professional development um, workshops, webinars that I've been to that have awarded um, badges. And so they've recognized me as, you know, having done some things and having earned some skills. Um, and I'm now showing them in my badge backpack. The first one is this Eli Spring Focus se session, which was a two-day session that was this spring from Educause. And the interesting thing about this is that Educause is a respected organization in higher ed. And so if other people are looking at my badges, um, then they see that I've earned a um, recognition from a respected organization. And so, you know, that carries some credibility with it. And you can see that the issuer is here. When you issue a badge from Blackboard right now, it says it's from Northern Illinois University. Um, so obviously that comes with some, some recognition and some respect. And then, you know, I just have a couple other examples here where, um, I've earned some other recognition from different places, including the NIU Faculty Development Instructional Design Center. When we did a Teaching Effectiveness Institute um, about a year and a half ago, uh, Stephanie Richter talked about badges. And so everybody that went to that, went to her session, earned a badge on badges. And uh, I think in many cases, that's almost the, always the case that you earn a badge and knowing about badges to begin with. Um, but what's going to 
start happening or what um, research thinks is going to start happening is that uh, we're going to see more of this micro-credentialing where um, students and adult learners may start um, earning things in this way and being able to present them um, in a format like the backpack. And what I do too is I link my backpack to my LinkedIn account. And so then anybody that I'm connected with professionally, um, organizations, um, other employers can see my backpack and see sort of this micro-credentialing um, that is starting to build and um, starting to show some of the, the skills and some of the professional development that um, I have earned over the years. So to bring that down to the student level, uh, you could even tie it to, you know, I'm in education, so I, I think about this. If you've learned um, certain um, teaching standards, um, certifications, you know, these could become something that faculty use to show that their students have earned certain teaching credentials or other professional standards. You know, we all sort of have our own. Um, and so, you know, the thought is, is we're going to see more and more of this micro-credentialing kind of thing. But I want to um, kind of expand this Educause Spring Focus a little bit more because it doesn't tell you a lot of information of what I did in order to earn this badge. So if you click on that and it kind of pops open, you can see it says that I'm a session graduate and um, the, the name of the issuer and the URL to kind of um, link back to um, you know exactly what happened and how it was credentialed. And then a little bit of a description, criteria, evidence, and when it was issued to me. So again, like just giving that outside person a look into exactly what I had to do in order to earn this badge. And so to tie that back in with um, what it would look like if it was in your Blackboard course and was a Blackboard achievement, you know, this criteria would be that evidence, those rules that we established. And so, you know, I don't know how impressed employers would be in the fact that you got 80% more on a blog entry, um, but I think as we build these things out a little bit more, um, we're going to see more um, kind of aggressive descriptions, more specifics on, on what a student has done to earn these sort of milestones. And uh, the one thing that we've been asking Blackboard to do a little bit more of is maybe grouping um, milestones together. So similar to the way the certificate is, you know, do you get a certificate or a badge for um, completing a whole course? And so you definitely can do that. You can add a badge at the end that'll say, you know, this student has earned a badge in um, educational technology because they've completed this course. Uh, but you want to get down to maybe adding those learning objectives um, so that a future employer knows exactly what the learning objectives and the skills that the students learned in that class were um, in order to kind of, you know, paint that total picture. Um, again, for a potential employer or even for a um, the next course that they're taking. Uh, maybe they're going on to graduate school and they want to kind of show that body of work that they've done um, in their undergrad. So there's a lot of different ideas that are kind of swirling around with um, how students will use this um, micro-credentialing. The other thing that's sort of um, out there right now is, you know, can you earn a badge or a credential for having an internship or a service learning project um, or being a volunteer as a community member. And again, this is almost just building that backpack, building that portfolio, um, and Blackboard having the achievements tool just kind of gives you um, one more way to kind of load these into the student's portfolio. 
So things are going along really smoothly, and you guys are very quiet. Um, but I hope that means that I'm just crystal clear in my explanation. Um, but you definitely know how to, to find us if you do have any questions um, or go back and uh, look at the recording and um, might spark some ideas. But since we do have time, uh, I'm going to go into application sharing. So I can go through um, a little, a few more of these things in order to show you. OK, can everyone see my application sharing? It's a, it's a beautiful screen. OK, <laughs> and I've just plopped in my, um, my Blackboard course that's opened up. Can everyone see my, my home page? I'm going to clear that. Good. OK. So I'm just going to kind of go through some things kind of live here. And whenever we use application sharing, um, sometimes it can kind of get a little spicy and a little dicey. So um, I'll try not to click through, through things too fast. But again, we're going to start with course tools under our course management area. And we're going to click on Achievements. And you can see here I have my great contributor milestone that I've already created. But we're going to create a new one. So we're up here in Create Achievement. You select that Course Completion Milestone or Custom. Start easy with a milestone. And we're going to call it Getting Started in the course. And then we're going to select our location. So I always like to browse when I select a location. Let's see if it pops up. And then again, I like to put it in that information area. So it's a, a place that hopefully the students are looking at on a regular basis. Achievement type milestone, and visible to the students. Description, to earn this milestone, you must complete the first three assignments. And obviously, you'd want to put a little bit more detail into that. but. I'm just going to make it real general for right now. So once you get the description the way you like it, you're going to hit Define Triggers. Here's that rule number one. Um, so I'm going to just put three assignments as the rule name. This is going to be an AND rule because we're going to make sure that they do at least three different things. I'm scrolling down, and I'm going to select a grade center column. And you can see that all the grade center columns have popped down here for me um, to be able to select. I'm going to select the first one, the first assignment called Assignment. It's very original. And then we're going to say, we're going to select a score that's greater than or equal to, and I believe it's a 10-point assignment. I can see it up above here. So I'm going to, again, select 8 for 80%. Click on Item. And it's right down here. I can tell exactly what I've added down here. And one of the things I really love about this is that for some reason, um, less than or equal is the first thing that pops up. And I just cannot think of a scenario where you'd want less than or equal to, unless you're golfing, I guess. Um, but I like to make sure that I did go ahead and select that greater than or equal to uh, to kind of shoot shoot for a higher level. So I've got that first assignment in here. I'm going to go back up to the top, and I'm going to select the second assignment, which is book review. Select score again. I can tell that the book review has a total point value of 
um, 100%, so I'm going to select again that greater than or equal to, and this time I'm going to put 80. Again, we're shooting for a, um, I guess, a B or better, but you know, you can change it to anything you want. So if you don't want them to, to settle for a B, change that to whatever, you know, whatever score you're looking for. And then we've got the two assignments, the two grade center columns down here, the condition we're looking for. And then if you, uh, for some reason you, ch you change your mind, you can go ahead and exit out, um, hit the X and just remove that criteria. And finally, we've got the third assignment, which is a reflective paper worth 100 points. And let's make it more difficult this time. Let's go for 90% on this third paper. But again, you want to make sure you have those exact um, requirements in that description so that the students know uh, what they need to aspire to. We're going to add that item, and now you can see we have the first three assignments, um, and they need to do all three in order to, um, to earn this milestone. Now I scrolled back up to the top, and right now I don't have any saved rules, um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit select. It's going to tell me, of course, to add everything you wanted to. And I'm going to say yes. And now we're here in the area where we're going to select our reward option. Now, if it's something that you know, you're know you going to change your mind about, of course, you can go back and edit it. Um, you probably don't want to go back and edit it um, once you get things started and the students are, are seeing it. Um, so definitely start off with something maybe low stakes, um, get a feel for it. Um, and then, of course, if you do have to change it at all, um, let the students know what the new requirements are. But in this case, if I want to just go back, oh, let's, let's not go too quick or it's going to be upset with me. Um, we'll go ahead and telling me I forgot to select the, the badge, so we'll go ahead and do that. This is our getting started badge, um, so I'll just use the green. And publish it to Mozilla. And I'm going to save and exit it. So it's ready to go, but it's asking me, you know, I've got one saved rule up here. Um, do I want to add another one? And that's where you can add those or rules in there. So maybe the other one is um, maybe not three assignments. Maybe one um, perfect assignment. Okay. And so in this case, maybe we're going to say you don't have to do all three, but in this case, we want that reflection paper to be 100%. You know what I did wrong is I didn't select add another rule. Hold on. Going too fast here. But again, if I want to change it, I can go back in and edit it. Go to define triggers. Now I'm going to select add another rule. And that was one. Perfect. We're going to select the reflection paper, and we're going to only settle for perfect. Add the item. and save and exit. So 
you can see that there's, and again, you would want to put it in the, the description. So you might want to change your description in this case to, you must complete the first three assignments. Um, you know, here they are. Here is the, the threshold of the grade. Or you can um, complete the uh, reflection and earn perfect 100 points on that. So again, it's all in the description. But the real fun happens when the students actually start earning these things. So once you have set this up and it's the way you like it, then you just start, uh, you know, grading so that first assignment comes in, you just grade it like you normally do, and the students that start earning those um, greater than points will just automatically earn those badges and they'll be able to see it in their My Achievements page. And you'll be able to see how many of the students have earned it by looking at this recipient area. We don't have any students that are, are currently in here, you know, in our, in our guest course, but you would see these numbers um, and you would see, by clicking on them, you would see exactly who had earned those different requirements. It's interesting, too, because uh, when we did this with our course sites um, and had um, students and participants in there, um, they were very, um, you know, how come I haven't earned my badge yet? And they were very motivated and they wanted to know what was going on. And in many cases, unfortunately, uh, we had made the requirement that they had to receive an 80% or graded on, on their weekly quizzes, and maybe they only got 70% or 75 on their weekly quizzes. So uh, we offered multiple attempts. So they went back and they earned, they kept taking the quiz until they earned 80% or greater um, just so they could earn their badge. So although it appeals to a uh, very extrinsic um, motivation, um, hey, it works. Um, it gets folks to um, kind of uh, push their limits a little bit and um, strive um, for greater levels and, um, you know, new skills, however you sort of want to use them. So um, I'm going to pop out of um, application mode, application sharing. Take a minute to kind of process that. Let's see if it pops me back out of there. It's taking its own sweet time, of course. But I want to open it up while it's kind of doing this. Um, we're getting towards our last few minutes here to see if anyone has any questions. Oh, do students know about the last uh, Blackboard upgrade? <laughs> um, you know, that's interesting because we do a lot of, um, you know, sharing with faculty. Um, but what ITS does for the students is that they'll, um, kind of moving things around here, they'll um, put it on the Blackboard page. And so when students, if they look at that sort of thing, um, they're going to look um, for, here we go, got things back the way I want it. Um, they're going to be looking for that information um, as they enter into Blackboard. And so they won't necessarily know about the achievements, so um, it it would be something that you might need to explain to them or, again, it it's, um, starts slow with something that's low risk just to kind of get them in the groove. Uh, but honestly, they, um, they may not notice the changes um, as quickly as the faculty will. And I'm interested in hearing from faculty as these um, changes happen. In this particular upgrade, um, it wasn't quite as big as the upgrade that happened uh, last year, um, but there has been a lot of enhancements. And so I think that um, 
because it's something they're sort of familiar with and it just became even um, easier to use um, that we might see folks um, using some of these enhancements a little bit more. Great question. Okay. All right. So here is my um, information if you do have any more questions. Uh, at the very bottom, I have um, this survey link. And I'm going to put this into the text chat so that you can um, just click on it if you'd like. There you go. Um, as always, we always appreciate the feedback that we get from our participants. Um, always good information. And this will be archived in the next couple of days. We're just going to process it a little bit. And so that, you know, if you do want to go back and, and take a look at things, please do so. Um, but again, I'm just going to hang out for a couple of minutes to see if you have any other questions. But um, other than that, thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you soon.